So we're going to work on the ArrayList quiz together. And then I want us to use NetBeans to design another forms-based application, frame-based application. I believe we did that once. It would be nice to touch upon it one more time. Then if you go on to take Advanced Java, then uh, you, know, you will hit it again. But it's fun to do a graphical user interface rather than just you know, a console app every time. So go ahead and open up the quiz on ArrayList. Alrighty, and y'all probably already know how to do this because you did the homework. But write a line of code that will declare and allocate an array list named data list. I think later on I just started calling it data rather than data list. I wish I'd made those match. Slight mistake. We'll roll with it. Make it a list of strings. Okay, so what's the first word? What's our data type? What is it? String. It's not an array. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm mangling the uh, question. What structure are we storing these strings in? It's not an array, it's a... So we've got to do array list, and then how do we say that it's an array list of strings? Why don't I zoom in then? All right. So array list, then what do I do to say it's an array list of strings? Yep. Angles, string, end angle, and what's the variable name? Data list. Data list, but it's not actually an array list. It's just a reference until I create a new array list. So what's the syntax for that? String. Array list. It's the data type again. And we could put string in there, but it just assumes it, so we don't have to. But it is a constructor, so we have to put the. We got to put the print. We do. Yep. I failed my exam. Here we go. So. Which is the true statement? An array list must be declared to contain classes, reference types only, or an array list may have classes and primitive data types like int. Classes only. Classes only. So if you're going to try to use primitive data, you've got to use wrapper types, like double with a capital D or the word integer with a capital I. Write a line of code that will add test to our data array list from the first question. I don't care if you say data or data list, right? I've kind of changed the name of the variable midstream. Oh, and I forgot the word add. There's supposed to be the word add here, right there. There's not. So anyway, data or data list, whatever you like, parentheses add, quote, test, end quote. That's how you append an item. Quiz doesn't ask any questions about stacks or queues, but if it was a stack, instead of dot add, it would be dot push. You're pushing something onto the stack. Now we're going to delete the first item using the remove method. So again, I said that the name of the list was data and remove, and what's the uh, value of the first item? Or what's the index number of it? Zero. Zero, yeah. Now we could be really silly and do this. Remove the value data.get. You print the C zero. Now that's silly. We're not going to do that. There we go. But I mean, that would technically work. Like yeah, sure. Get the first value and then delete by value rather than by index. What I mean is when you get the whatever it is zero, that would be its own string. So then could you technically add a string in there instead of a zero? 
dot get will return whatever data type you declared it as. If it's an array of integers, it's going to return an integer. Right. Say, say, for example, you have an array list of names. Right. And one of the names is like Sam. Mm -hmm. So if you typed in just the, uh, if you typed in str the string Sam into the remove, will that automatically just remove all Sams or? It'll remove one Sam. It will not remove them all. So the first Sam that comes up, it'll, it'll, once it reads it, it'll Sam. Exactly, right. So you can call dot remove with either an index value or with a value to search. So is it like a faster way of comparing each and every? Variable? Rather than writing a loop and deciding yeah. which one to delete, absolutely, right. Because you could write a loop that would step through the ball and if it ever found it, delete it. Yeah. But they've written that for you. All right. Based on what we just said, which of these is true? C. Everybody agree? I hope so because it's true. Remove can delete by index number. Remove can also delete by value. The only time it gets a little bit quirky is if the value is an integer because that's what the index number is. In which case you have to create a new integer wrapper class object and search for it that way. Question six. What method returns the number of elements? How do you get the length, the size, or the count of the elements in the list? Size. You kind of wish it was that to match arrays and uh, strings, but it's dot size. <clears throat> All righty, we're going to print all the elements stored in the data list. You could do it with an index, but since we have four each loops, that's easier, easier to type. So four, these are strings, I believe. For string s colon in data, parentheses, system.out.println, s. If you wanted to, if you really like index-based loops, or int i is equal to zero, i is less than data dot size, i plus plus, you know, and then system dot out dot print line data dot get element i, get the element at index i. Yeah, you could do that. I'd rather do it the first way. have to type both of them in on the quiz. Write a line of code that will get the first element from the data list and store it in a string variable called z. Well, I've already been showing y'all dot get to the whole time, so this one's not too challenging. So string z equals data dot get element zero because it's the first item. If you call dot get or remove with an invalid index, it throws an exception, which is a good thing. You don't want to try, you know, C++ and C are notorious for letting you access past the end of an array and getting invalid data, which could corrupt your program or cause it to crash, and it'll do so just fine and dandy without telling you. Fortunately, better behaved languages like Python, Java, and C Sharp stop you from doing that. And lastly, write a line of code that will insert, that's the name of the method, the value sample into the beginning of the data list so that it's the first one in the list. So, what's the name of the list? Data dot, what's the name of the method? Um, insert? You know what? 
I think he's right. I think Daniel's right and I'm wrong. I think it's not insert. I think I'm thinking of another language. I think it's add and you just specify the first value, the index value of it. And then the value you're adding. But is it vice versa? Does the index come first or second? I think you're right. You might want to check that first. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to I'm pretty sure you're right. Because that's how it distinguishes. If the index value was an integer, well, let's look it up. Java array list dot add. Oh, the uh, index comes first. Okay. All right. We'll come back and fix that. Zero comma sample. Yeah. Or whatever. You would have gotten a compilation error. You would have fixed it. Bless you. All righty. Go ahead and submit that. Any questions over that? We have the students like two who never ask questions. <laughs> All righty. But two ask me questions by text, for which I'm very thankful. Much rather people ask questions than just not. You know, be confused and not. All right. You mentioned something about extra credit if people signed up for another class or something. I forgot to make a Dropbox for that. You're right. Extra credit, which can be used to replace a homework assignment if you're missing a homework assignment. If you've enrolled in a CIT class for next semester. What about one for this year? For this semester? Like an intercession course? No, I mean, like, I have your job on the C++ No, no, no. It, it's, <laughs> it's, to encourage, it's to encourage enrollment next year. Nice try, though. <laughs> yeah, you're enrolled in this class. Get credit for that. And then in that class, he wants credit for this one. Sure. Trying to get numbers. Exactly. <laughs> no wonder you're going into security. CIT class. Right, any CIT class. That's Doesn't have to be one of mine. I strongly recommend you get a project done. It'll hurt your grade. It'll lower it 10% if you don't. So, like I said, I strongly admit, I strongly encourage you to get a project done. I'm going to just stick this up in the projects folder because it'll be easy to spot. Let's add that to our announcements.
ahead and load up NetBeans because we're going to create a primitive user interface, but it's going to be a user interface. It's going to have a button. Maybe we'll even have it two, have two buttons, right, for like adding and removing. What it's going to do is it's going to have a field where you type something in and you click add and it adds it to an array list, which is going to be displayed in a scrolling text field. Or you type in something and you click remove and it'll remove it from the array list. And it better not crash if that name did not exist in the array list to begin with. So is this now Z3? Yep. Z3. Close all my other pages. What we're going to do is we're going to make a new project, but we're going to tell it to not create a main project. So Java, Java application, next. Here where it says create main class, don't do that. If we do do it, you're just going to have to delete it, so don't. So Z3 GUI. And I'm going to call this. <clears throat> and if you've been following along the entire time using text edit to write your Java programs, which you could have, or Eclipse or something else, then uh, unfortunately this forms designer that I'm showing you is part of NetBeans. So that's all right. Okay, where's my brand new lecture? C3 GUI. What you're going to go do is come down to Source Packages, right click on Source Package under your project, do New JFrame Form. Now there's lots of graphical user interface libraries for Java, but this is the one that the NetBeans Builder supports. And it wants a name, whatever, Z3 or data or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it has a warning at the bottom. Do we care about that? Or? All right, the warning is something to the effect of you should not install stuff into the default package. Yeah. If we care, you could do a new package. If you don't care, leave it alone. Under what circumstances? If you're working on, on a uh, project with a lot of other people and you've been told to maintain your uh, your code in the packages, yeah. What do I do? Yeah, it's totally cool to do that. What do I do again? So, uh, where are we at? Um, you, you, did you make your project? Did you do file new, Java, Java application, and click next and deselect create main class? Have you done it, that so far? Oh, I forgot to deselect main class. Uh, we can delete the file, then. it's all right. And then, once you do that, go down to Source Packages and do New JFrame Form. If you don't see JFrame Form listed there, click Other, and you can search for it. Now, there's JFrames, and then there's JPanels. To my way of thinking, JPanels are like the pop-up dialogues, like, you know, the file dialogue. Okay. okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. Bless you. Bless you. If I look at my projects, go away. I should now have a java file either in the default packages or if I moved it if I created a package I would put it there it does not matter all right we have a little form designer here 
You can drag fields out. You can drag buttons out. You can drag uh, text areas, which is a scrolling place for text. This is called palette, and it's got all of our controls that we can drag out here. If you don't see the palette, good question. Window, IDE tools, palette. Okay, so I want a text field so that I can type in a word, and I want an add button, and I want a remove button, and I want a text area. So, text field, drag it out. I'm going to give it a better variable name than just J text field. I could do that under properties, or I could just right click on it and do change variable name. Change variable name. What am I going to call that? I don't know. J text field underscore data. That's pretty boring, but okay. I like going ahead and maintaining the name of the control type there just so that they all kind of cluster together when you're typing in, you know, this dot and you get a list of things. You can see a list of all your JTEX fields. Maybe you don't want it to start out with some text like that. Maybe you want it to start out blank. I'm going to leave that text for now. When you run it, you'll be able to replace it. The first time you run it, it's going to ask what the main class is. And Daniel, did you create a main class? <coughs> Like it's okay. I don't see one. So when you run it, it pops up a window. It's going to ask you what the main class is. Well, it's our J frame. Should be building. It should be building. Close it. I'm going to do a <coughs> clean and build. I'm going to run it again. There it is. All right. So that's our user interface right now. That's pretty boring. But you see what I mean. It pops up with this text here. That's the default text. We could change the default text. You can come up here and right click and do edit text backspace over all that. So I just right clicked on the form on the field and I did edit text and I backspaced over it. So now when I run it, yeah, cool. Now this is a really bad design because I haven't added, you know, I'm not telling them what to type there, right? Type in a name, type in, you know, something like that. Alrighty. If we want to put something that describes what that text field is, that's called a label. So under the swing controls, you'll see label. You can drag a label out, and we can describe what that's supposed to be. Enter a word, enter a name, something like that. Student name, whatever. Patient name. And I'm sorry I can't zoom in on this. I don't know how to change the zoom on the uh, of this window. Probably way. But what was that you added, Dan? I think we can all see it. What was that you added? What I did is I dragged out a label. And then I right clicked on it to do edit text. <coughs> now I'm going to get rid of it. Delete. All right, now I'm going to add a button. There's a button controller here. Just grab that button and drag it out. So, button, drag. I want the text to say add, and then I'm going to edit the variable name. Now there's a properties panel I am not seeing. If I right click and do properties, 
cool. I'm used to seeing it down here, and I think you can get it to show up down there if you do tools, IDE, or window IDE tools properties. I ought to be able to dock it somehow down there, but anyways. Now that I've done that, I wish it wasn't there. Okay, so I could right click on this button and do properties, and it says the text there. I could change the text there as well as changing it the other way. It's going to be add. And I also want to change the variable's name. Now I'm not seeing that as a property. It may be there. So I'm going to change the variable name the same way I was doing before. Why? Because if I look at the variable name, it's just going to say J button 1. And then if I added a remove button, it would be J button 2. And so on. And those names are too generic. So I'm going to right click on the button, choose change variable name, and instead of J button 1, I'm going to make it J button add. Then if I create another button, it's going to be called J button remove or delete. And we're going to need a text field to contain our data. Each name they add, we want to add to the text field. We're going to use an array list to store all this information. The user interface doesn't know that. Not a text field. Sorry. If you did what I did, you messed up because I did it. Instead, grab text area. Now that's a great big box because it's supposed to fill up with data and when it gets too much data it puts a scroll bar on it. How did you delete that text field that you created with the I right clicked and found delete way under here. I dragged it off screen. Well, that's okay. I dragged it back over to the thing. Does that work? Can you grab something and I don't think so. I don't think I realized what you did. I did that same thing and when I looked in the code it was still there. I'm going to see if I can hit Control Z and get it back. You might hit Control Z a few times and see if you can get it back and delete it the other way. All right. Now, when you have a control, it needs to be bound to a method that gets invoked when you click on the control. Now, that sounds all complicated. There's an easy way to do that, though. If I bring the properties back, and I'm going to close it again real soon because it's not necessary. You see events. And if you click on events, you see everything that can happen to that button. A mouse can press it. A mouse can release it. It could change. Somebody could type into it, right? All that stuff. I'm not going to do it that way. Instead, that means gives you a shortcut for tying it to an event. Just double click on the button. And don't double click in the word add because it might just offer to edit the text. Instead, you know, kind of click on the side. And then we don't see the add method. It's there. Click design to go back, double click on it again, and it should take us straight there. There's our method. Add action performed. So this method gets invoked by the framework. Let's just make it print add. System dot out dot print line add. Just to prove it worked. I'm going to run it, type in something, doesn't matter what we type in yet, we're not doing anything with that field. I click add, and we see that it invoked our method. Almost like magic. We could figure out how that works if we scrolled up and down and we looked at stuff. For example, where are these buttons actually created? Highlight all that stuff right there. J button, add, action, perform. No, I'm sorry. Don't highlight all that. Just do a control F and do J button underscore add if you renamed it. And you'll see down near at the bottom, here's where the buttons are declared. Each time we add something to the form, it adds a new variable, a new object to our class. Now we like to put our variables up at the top, but NetBeans doesn't care. Java does not care where the variables are declared. So what else? 
That thing's got to be initialized. It's got to have some text. So I'm going to hit Control F and do look for previous. And up here is where it is created. J button add is equal to new java.x.swing.j button. There should be a place where the add text is set. Right there. See that? J button add, add some text. Now all this stuff is in gray, meaning we shouldn't change it. It's real tempting to want to change it there. The editor might not even let you do that. The answer is no, the editor does not let you do that. Okay, let's decide what we're going to do. We need a place where an array list can be declared. That's kind of gone Got a problem? Yeah, you can't edit that stuff, so that's okay. Well, when I tried... What is the name? There's something that didn't add to the button, but I... Okay, we'll go back to your designer. Double click on J button. Just double click. Deep, deep. Huh. Yep. There are some other things I did not add. And there's our add button. We haven't added anything else. We're all good. We're all good. You did not change the name of it to add, but that's okay. That's okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to, just for now, in your add method, add that line of code. System.out.println add. So what should it really do? When we click add, we need to pull the data out of that label and add it to an array list. Do we have an array list? Not yet. So we need to add a variable. We need to find some white spot in all of this class where we could declare our array list. I kind of like to do it up at the top, personally, mm -hmm. myself. So I'm going to scroll up to the top. And here, where it says creates new JFrame form, above that, I'm going to make my array list. I'm just going to call it data or data list, something like that. Array list angle brace, how about an array of strings? Array list angle string end angle data equals new array list angle string. Nope, nope, I can leave off the second word string. So open angle, close angle. Open parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. Now, why did we make this part of the class? Because we're going to have multiple methods that use the same data. Like if we put a remove method, it's going to use the same data. But of course, it doesn't know what an array list is, so we're going to let NetBeans add, you know, Java.util. Or we could come up there and do it by, you know, hand, but I'm, I'll do it here. Add import for java.util.arraylist. Something else was missing because this program only has package. That's fine. You did not put it in a package. That's totally cool. I could get rid of that. And then if I went out and fixed it here, if I said move to correct packs, package, move class to correct folder, now it's not in a package. That's cool. That's totally cool. All the package means is what subdirectory it's stored in. I had it stored in a package called GUI, but right now it's in default. I can move it back to my GUI package, which you don't have because you didn't create it, by dragging it like that, and it asked me if I want to refactor it. So if you like packages, you can right-click on the source packages folder and do new package. If you want to arrange it like that, but it's not necessary. Alrighty, so our add button needs to pull the text out of our label. To make this easier, gang, please make sure that your label has the correct variable name. So click on the design tab, right click on the field. I was calling it a label, I'm sorry, it's a field, text field. Choose change variable name and make sure it doesn't just say J text field one. It's clear if it says J text field underscore data. Now, honestly, variable names don't matter, right? So we wouldn't have to. All right, 
I'm going to double click on the add button again to go straight to our add method. <clears throat> All right. So let's get the text out. String text equals this dot j text field underscore data. See, if we give, give them good variable names when we use the pop-up list, it makes a lot more sense. Now, if you only have one JTEX field, okay, now it's saying this dot JTEX field underscore data isn't good enough. We actually have to get the text out of it. So, after the word data, dot, and remind me, is it good? Get text. Get text sounds good. Get, 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 text, uh, get. get text, like that. Now that pulls it out. Let's print that out. System.out.println, quote, text equals, end quote, plus text, just to make sure it's working. We'll probably remove all these prints. So I'm going to run it. I'm going to type something in here. Student name, Joe Bob. I'm going to click Add. And if I come down here and look at the output, I should see the word Add Text equals Joe Bob. Very well. We can add it to our array list. So, I forgot what I called my array list. Data, right? Data dot add parentheses text. Now the only problem is, is that this does not update the display, right? I can run it. I can type in as much data as I want. Not doing a thing, not putting it in here. So we need a method that will refresh that display. We can do that. So, private void update, parentheses, in parentheses. We're going to make a string and we're going to fill it full of data for the for loop, separating them by carriage returns. So, string output equals empty, quote, quote. And then I'm going to write a for each loop that goes through our data list. For parentheses, string s colon data in parentheses. Curly brace. Output plus equals s plus quote backslash n. Now there are other ways to do it. Yeah, sure, but that's easy. Where do I go? I can't do it. Let me come up. All right, you can't type in the gray part, but you can put it like above main or under. Yeah. Where'd you put it? I put it above my add method. If you can find your add method. Right. Yeah, just put the cursor on the white line between the two gray parts and hit enter. Right, yeah. That ought to put some space. Well, yeah, yeah, see if that works. Really yeah, you can do that there too. <clears throat> now once we've built this string, we need to update the text area with it. So, the next line after our for loop is going to be this dot jtext area dot set text. This dot jtext area dot set text parentheses output in parentheses.
and we're going to call that every time we click the add button. So I need to I need to go and modify the add method to call update after it's added to the array list, right? So I'm going to scroll down a little bit after the call to data dot add. I'm going to put a call to update. And I'm also going to remove these print statements because I'm sure it's working now. So, update. Or this dot update if you prefer. We could, could have given it a slightly better name, right? Like update <coughs> text area, something like that. I think that's good enough. All right, I'm going to run it, and then I'm going to pause, make sure everybody's doing okay. All right, so student name, Joe, add, Bob, add, Sam, add, Billy. Maybe it'd be nice if they were sorted. I forget, is there a sort method on array list? Um, pardon me? somehow link enter to hit the button. Yes, yes, we could. We could. Right, the question is, is you know, it's not doing anything if you hit enter. And you can do it. You can make it so that if you hit enter, then it automatically triggers it. So, data dot sort. Is that good? Yeah. No, that's not looking, that, that's looking a little bit too much. I don't want to. Well, one more question. Is it also possible to set it so that once you type something in and you hit enter, you also delete the text that's in the text? Yes, yes. The question is, could, right, you're thinking ahead and you're doing an awesome job of it because here's the way I would like for it to work. If you've ever used one of these forms, you can imagine you'd want to type in a name, hit enter. It would blank it out, be ready to enter another name. You type in a name and hit enter. You type in a name and hit enter. The danger would be that if they meant to delete but they hit enter by, you know, which did an ad. But anyways, so yeah, why don't we see if we can wipe that text out after we add it? And we can. All we do have to do is do set text rather than get text, right? So before or after we call update, let's blank that field out. This dot j text field underscore data dot set text parentheses and just set it to an empty string. Yes, you did. It's just that we did not rename the control to add, so that's why it looks a little bit different, but it's fine. You've got it in the right place. I deleted those print statements, though, so if you feel like deleting the print statements, go for it. All right, so I type in a name. I hit add. Bob. Okay. It clears the form out. What I would like for it to do is to move the cursor back there. There ought to be a set focus command. And when I say ought to, it's because I've been uh, also doing this in C Sharp and it's got slightly different stuff. Let's see if there's a set focus. Wherever the cursor is, it's called focus. This dot J text field underscore data dot set focus. I'm not seeing it. Nope. All right. Quit Googling. I'll solve it. There's a set cursor. Set focus on text field in Java Swing. Swing is the name of the library. I don't think it's set cursor. That's why I didn't. Request focus? Maybe it's request focus. J text field data dot request focus. That's it. That's it. That'll do it. It's, 
credits and run it. I'm going to type in a student name. I'm going to click Add. It wiped it out and it set the focus. It put the cursor back in student name. Then come look. It's this dot, yeah, we have to tell it which control. Yeah, so this dot JTEX field underscore data dot request focus. And when I did a Google on it, Stack Overflow was showing some insane ways of doing it. I know this works. It's simple. That's what I'm going to go with. We almost have it perfect. Yeah, we might want to add the delete button that I was talking about. But the last thing I want it to do is if the user hits enter, I want it to trigger this add button. So we need to see if there's an event for the text field. We need to check his events and see if we can tie it to the add method. So I'm going to go back to the designer. I'm going to click on the text field in question, right click and choose properties, and come over and look for events. Well, yeah, um, it could be that that's what we're going to wind up doing. And I'm not seeing what I'm looking for. There's a key press. There's a key press and there's a key released. That may be how we do it. Or is it too tight? Trigger J button from J text field. Java hit enter. <clears throat> harder than I want to do. Let's see if we can figure it out. We're going to try to use where was that? That key pressed. Key pressed. Or key released. Key typed. Yeah, one of those. So J text field data key typed. You saw what I did. I went to events. I went to key typed. I chose a default name for the method and it created it for me. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to see which key they typed, right? Because we only want to click the add button if it's the right thing. So, we have to check the event. And I'm flying by the seat of my pants. I haven't done this in a year. If EVT dot get key character or get key code returns the integer key code associated with the key in this event. I'm not sure typed is going to work, but we'll we'll give it a shot. I'm not going to use if. I'm just going to print that out. System dot out dot print line quote typed space end quote plus evt dot get get key come on pop it up dot get key character or key code. Let's try get key code plus a space plus event dot get key character. Event dot get key character. Where does this go? 
see how I created this. I went to Designer. I clicked on the text field. I went to Properties. I went to Pro Events. And then I chose the default option for me with the pull-down menu. Like that. What Except I don't actually want that, so I'm going to delete what that one. You, what buttons you pressed again? And why, what, what one was this anyway? I chose key typed. Key typed from the start the beginning? Yep. Or lost. Design. Right click on our text field. Choose properties. From our properties dialog, choose events. Choose key typed. Come over here and click the down arrow and choose that name. And it will add that method to our form. And I think it just deleted my text. Nope. And so there's my method. And I'll come check to see if you're doing it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to run it and see. What happens when I press enter there? Well, firstly, I'm going to like type 1. So I typed a 0, 1. Oh, yeah? 2, 3. Okay, so that first one, that get key code, that's kind of lame. It's not telling us anything. Backspace, hit enter. Woohoo, something happened. Maybe we should print out, maybe we should cast it to an int, right? Let's find out what the ASCII value of that character is. Something. The string text is underlined. Okay, I'll be right there. So here I'm going to cast this to an int. And then when I hit enter, okay, it's a character code 10. What about backspace? Apparently, is backspace. All right. Let's go see. Maybe your text field has a different name than mine. Go back to uh, design. Right click on. Copy that. Control C it. I'll go back to your source. Oh, that's yeah. Cancel that. Back to source. Just put empty quotes there beside that. Double quotes here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why did it do that? There we go. Okay, go hover your mouse over the arrow. So now it says void can't be converted to string. Oh. Delete everything in front of this. Because we're not getting any text anymore. We're setting some text. So I added it, but it didn't actually show up there because we need our update method. So go back to your add method that we were just editing. Here, just the code we were just editing. It's probably still on source. And down here, after we add the text, call update. So just hit enter and type in update. Uh. Yep, call update there. Uh. Update. We're calling 
this method. Oh. All right, so it's doing something, but we're not seeing the result. So I'm going to grab the mouse away from you because I think that we need to make this a text area. So I'm going to come over here. Whoopsie. Where am I going? I'm going to go into Designer. There's also, I'm also thinking missing a tile. That's yeah, so I'm going to grab a text area and pull it out. I'm just going to pull this to the side. And then I'm going to go back to our update function. And after we build our output string, we need to set it. And also see so. some code there then on your screen and what's here. Not much, but you do need that line. Right. Inside your update method. Yep. All right, let's give it a shot. Okay, so we could just delete. This one? Yeah, because we don't need this one anymore, right? This so you can go to the designer, right. click on it, choose delete. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we figured out that if the character is a 10, that means that the character turn has been hit. That's probably 0A, character turn line feed. This is a line feed character in terms of ASCII. Okay, so where was that? Find the uh, the data key typed method, and we're going to do if parentheses parentheses int in parentheses. You know what? I could just store that in a character. Int key equals parentheses int in parentheses evt dot get key care parentheses in parentheses like that. And then we'll do if key equals 10, or if key not equal to 10, we're just going to return. So if, or if it is equal to 10, we're going to trigger something. So if key equals equals 10, we need to call our add method. And I hope this works. This dot J button add action performed. And I'm going to pass in a null because I don't know how to create an event. Let's see if that's going to work. So you see what I'm doing? I'm checking to see the key and if it's equal to the uh, line feed character, if they hit enter. We're invoking our own add button. Ten, hit enter, and it added it. Twenty, add. Thirty, add. We are cool. I would like to have this data sorted, right? So I'm going to do a quick Google to see how to sort it. But we also want a delete button. We've got so much, and we've got ten minutes. We can do it. So I'm going to go back to the designer. I'm going to drag out another button and call it delete. Button. I'm going to change the text of it. So I'm going to right click and do change edit text, excuse me, I'm going to call it delete. And then I also want to change the variable name to something a little bit more friendly. So I'm going to right click on it change variable name and instead of j button one or j button two or whatever it is on yours do j button underscore delete now this code's going to almost be the exact same thing as our other code was and as a matter of fact i'm just going to do some copy and pasting 
except we're going to change dot add to dot remove. Okay, so I've added that button, but I haven't added a method for it yet. I'm going to double click on it to create a method. Here's our delete action performed. Find your other action performed, wherever he is. Here, if the add one, copy all that stuff and just paste it into your new method. So I went to my first action performed method. I highlight all this stuff. I'm going to come down and find my new action performed method and paste it. But I'm going to change dot add to dot remove. It's almost too easy. Let's try it. So, Bob, Doug, Silly. Now, if I hit delete with nothing on there, it doesn't do anything. But if I type in Bob and hit delete, it deletes it. Now, what would be even more awesome? If you selected a name here and hit delete, if it removed it. We could make it do that, but we're not. But we did see that get selected text method. We could get the selected text out of this control. Now, I said I wanted to do something else. Sort the data as we add it. Let me Google how to sort, and that'll be the last thing we do to it. Sort array list <clears throat> strings in Java. Collections.sort. Well, that makes it look easy. I like that. Go back to your first your add action performed. After you call data.add, collections with a capital C, collections.sort, parentheses data. And that's going to be an unexpected class, probably. Although I did, J, um, I think I changed mine to import java.util.star. If there's a red error, just click it and add the class. An oddity about the JTEXT area is that you could come in and you could erase all that. That doesn't change it though. If we add something else out, it rebuilds it. It'd be nice to make this read only. Let's see if we can figure out how to make that read only. I'm going to go back to the designer. I'm going to select my text area. I'm going to right click and choose properties. I'm going to see if one of the properties is something like read only or no modifier or something like that. Yeah, Google is our friend. J text area read only Java. Set editable false. That's what we need to do. So here we go. Where are we going to do that? We're going to go back into the source and we're going to find the first method that is called in all the code, which is up here, new J frame, init components. After the components are knitted, we want to set that one to false. So, this dot j text area or j text area one or whatever you called it dot set editable parentheses false. Now it can't be edited. Alice, 
try to edit it, and we can't. Perfect. I consider this application done. What would be the next thing to do? Put a save button on the top that would save it to a file. You know, at the bottom I mean. Or a load button that if we click load it would load it from a file. It would probably need to pop up a little dialog that asks for the file. Might have just asked for the file name. I'm sure that people have cooked up an actual honest to goodness file dialog that we could go and import and bring in and stuff like that. But why don't we stop there? All right, last class. I hope that was fun. Okay. Got a question. Hey, I bended when I uh, hit enter. All right. Oh, well, is this correct? Is this, is this good? Scroll down. I'm sorry, scroll down to this. But it had been working up until recently, right? Or did it never work? It worked until we tried to add the enter button. Okay. Go back to your designer. <coughs> Double click on the add button again. It, it worked until we did this. All right. Scroll up a little. This has got an uppercase A and this has got a lowercase. Change that to upper. I'm not sure how that rogue method down there got called, this but see where it does that? Make that an uppercase A. Okay. Yeah. Yay. That was it. Excellent, excellent. So we have a rogue method here. I don't know if we can just highlight it and delete it or what. I'm going to go and look at the commands. I don't know how that happened. Add. Nope, don't know how that happened. It's probably safe to delete it. It's not in gray, so why not? So run it again to make sure. This is incorrect. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And can it remove? Can it delete? Well, I guess the app is closed. Control F and see if you have that in there. Control F. There's our find function. <coughs> okay, now look for yeah, new J. Find the new J. J. Well, okay. Oh, you know what? That's.
just because you named your lecture Z3 and I didn't rename the file. So that is correct. So after init components is where you're going to put it. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. You're just going to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me make the Dropbox. Now, in this case, if you were going to try to submit this for reals, you would actually want to zip the whole folder. I mean, I don't care if you just give me the .java file, but if you want to download this and open it at home, you should zip the entire folder. What am I doing? Are we going to have access to any of this after we leave class? No, you're not. Unfortunately, you don't have access to the D2L section once the due date is done. Z3 is there.